My name is Brian Sagi. I am a product manager at Gradle. Um, first of all, I want to thank those of you who are still in the room in the last hour of Lightning Talks on the last day of a two-day conference. Um, so yeah, we're at Gradle with the elephant in the room. You may have seen our name on some of the sponsors and wondered, what the heck is this company that makes a alternative uh, build tool to Bazel doing here? And well, I am here to tell you about the benefits of a Turing complete build configuration language <laughs> and why it is time for Bazel to finally ditch Starlark. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, the Gradle build tool team is exploring uh, supporting its own declarative DSL configuration language that it's calling Declarative Gradle. Uh, it is now available uh, in early access preview. If you would like to check it out, go to declarative.gradle.org. They are currently taking feedback, and I figure the amount of people in here that have collective knowledge of declarative languages and configuration tools uh, would be great help to another open source build tool. So that's uh, shameless plug number one. I'll try to get through this with no more than two more. <laughs> so this brings me to the topic I actually want to talk about, which is something more related to developer productivity and how that relates to your Bazel builds. And this is, are you ignoring your most expensive build problems? And Develocity can help. So the question, what are the most expensive problems in your build? And just a note here, when I say build, I'm going to refer to build meaning build and test. So a quick show of hands. Who has these uh, slow build and test times as their most expensive? OK. Uh, frequent build failures, but those failures that just keep coming back over and over. Flaky tests. Wow, OK. Uh, Expensive cloud compute resource costs. A few. Uh, none of the above. My builds are cheap. OK. We'll get back to this a little bit. Well, we want to talk about first what makes a build expensive. Well, there's the direct monetary costs. And this is what we're talking about. Compute resources, CPU, RAM, memory, your cloud compute. And then there's productivity costs. What happens when a build fails or is not reliable and you break your developer's state of flow with distractions or slow build times? Or you send them on a wild goose chase, fixing broken builds misguided by flaky tests. And then there's the opportunity costs. What about delayed releases or missing product features that, go, that did not make it into release in time? For those of you that work in a continuous integration deployment cycle where you're releasing daily or weekly, maybe this doesn't matter. But for those of us in an environment where you release quarterly, semi-annually, annually, or in an embedded environment where you get one shot to do a release, it could be critical of trying to get something in. And if you miss that due to misproductivity, there's a large cost. Then there's people costs. The frustration of losing productivity Missing release cycles can, of course, create employee dissatisfaction, maybe ultimately leading to attrition. But there's the obvious thing, which is our wages. The people here in this room, the developers you support, are the most expensive, likely the most expensive asset that your company is spending money on. Now, that could be different maybe for those custom hardware companies, and you're spending a very large amount of money. But this is probably uh, the most common case. Well, this doesn't mean you shouldn't optimize your compute resources. It does highlight how important developer productivity is to your bottom line. When I worked at Google in engineering productivity, we actually had a really strong culture of uh, thinking about costs in terms of soft software engineering hours. It kind of gave you a good guideline to think about the cost of these things relative to one another. A lot of these build-related expenses, though, can be hidden. So how do you expose them? Well, Google created Bazel as sort of one part of a complete build ecosystem. In addition to the Bazel client, there's the remote execution API, which has been talked about extensively. It offers remote caching, remote execution. Uh, but there's also the build event stream. And observability was built in as a first class concept. It's full of information and event metadata about the builds that happen in your Bazel releases, or your Bazel builds. 
So whether you use our products, DevVelocity, an open source solution, your custom homegrown solution, or as I'm sure one of our numerous competitors here would agree, to collect appropriate metrics and gain actionable build insights, you really need a build observability platform. And the truth is, you don't know what you can't observe. If you're not collecting data about all of your builds, both in CI and local development uh, machines, you don't really know what the true story is of what's going on out there. Collecting metrics is sort of part of the essence of developer productivity engineering, or engineering productivity, or developer experience, or whatever the name you want to give this sort of role and practice is. To make our teams of developers more productive by measuring where they currently are, changing the tooling, code base, the environment, and workflows to try to improve their productivity and see how those changes impact productivity and release cycles and their satisfaction over time. This is where metric frameworks like Dora and Space come into play. If you're not familiar with them, they're both there basically to help you decide what metrics you should be tracking to understand developer productivity and your release cycles. I'm not gonna get them into them too deep right now, but they're there for your awareness. But from there, you need to figure out how you're going to track those metrics and develop and acquire appropriate tooling that can help you make impactful decisions to move the needle in the right direction. This is where a good observability platform can come into play. But what should you look for in a good build observability platform? I'm gonna go through three sort of sample questions that you may have run across sometimes in your mind and where metrics and, and insights can help inform uh, and guide you to re reduce your expensive build problems. Number one, kind of what's going on out there in the other world outside of my own machine or my own CI builds? How many of you have had a case where you run a build and it fails or a test and it fails and you just wonder like, is this failing for just me or is it for everyone else, right? And how many times have you just wished you had a list to just see what's going on? How many times have you run a build that's failing and you wonder how could this have ever passed or maybe did it just start failing recently? Never underestimate the power of a shared searchable history of builds across your organization. Another question. What are the most common impactful build failures that are happening at my company or on my team? I know that I have some build problems, but what do I, where should I start uh, to tackle those, these problems? Well, I wanna find out how many users, host machines, and projects are impacted. Maybe I have one user that's running 10,000 builds in a for loop and it's only impacted on one machine. If I wanna go fix that, I'm only impacting one user. But if I have 1,000 users on 1,000 different machines with 2,000 failures from one build problem, well, that's a pretty good place to start. Speaking of impact, let's talk about flaky tests. Those tests that given the same inputs uh, sometimes pass, sometimes fail. You have flaky tests. Most of you actually raised your hand and some didn't, but you have flaky tests. Uh, everyone has flaky tests. If you don't have flaky tests, you're probably not writing tests. <laughs> but you shouldn't have flaky tests. So this is sort of the conundrum and the sort of everlasting cycle that we're in. But do you know where they lurk? Uh, which ones should your teams or the, t the owners of those teams go and target to start reducing the flakiness across your builds? The platform that you choose should show you your most flaky tests and let you drill down by the most frequent occurrences so that you can have the highest impact when you go to have, say, a flaky test fix it. So shameless plug number two, uh, DevVelocity can help. What is DevVelocity? It's a self-hosted, web-based observability and acceleration platform, formerly named Gradle Enterprise. Uh, we renamed it because it is not a, an enterprise commercial version of the Gradle build tool. And in fact, we support multiple build tools, including Maven, Gradle, obviously, Bazel, which is why we are here, uh, SPT, and we're looking at adding support for JavaScript and Python ecosystems like NPM and PIP. 
We support both observability and troubleshooting, as well as acceleration technologies through remote cache and test distribution and predictive test selection for some of the other build tools. We offer build scans to show you event level analytics for a single build invocation, as well as uh, dashboards. So in summary, understand your true costs around build and test, choose metrics to monitor and analyze, and select appropriate tooling uh, that can collect those metrics and give you actionable insights that you need. If you're interested in other developer productivity uh, topics, I recommend that you check out some talks from the TPE Summit that will be posted on tpe.org, uh, shameless plug number three. And we have free classes available at DPE University about Devlocity. And again, my name is Brian Segi. Thank you very much.